Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out Batman Superman World's Finest Issue 23 by Mark Waid and Dan Mora. The battle against Gorg reaches its climax as Batman and Superman of Earth Zero team up with their Earth 22 counterparts to take the fight to the world's godlike ruler. On top of battling the villain, Bruce and Clark must also contend with David who has become Magog and must try and convince the boy that they mean him no harm and that Gorg is the real villain here. Considering Wade spent the last four issues, and even more than that with David's story several issues prior, the culmination here feels a little bit rushed. The entire issue was just this one big battle with Gog, and both sets of Batman and Superman are talking in a roundabout dialogue that didn't really go anywhere for me. It just said a lot of the same things we've seen before in past issues over and over again until David turns good. We also don't really learn anything more about Gog's plan, and I was sure there was going to be some sort of hidden part in the story like he wasn't telling anyone that there was some sort of silver lining to his plan or something but nope he just wants to invade apocalypse sacrifice earth 22's heroes and try and get his way back into his people's heaven i did however like wade's framing of gog a villain should fully believe in their plan and that they are right and it's what makes a great villain we've seen it countless times over and over and gog fully believes in his plan and even views it as some sort of altruistic heroic endeavor, frustrated that the actual heroes can't see that. That sort of stuff with the villain was really hard to come by these days as a lot of villains are very mustache twirling, very simple villains and I wish Wade had explored that a little bit more with this since it made him a little bit more complex and as we saw in his backstory where he actually didn't like fighting and didn't want his people to go to war, it really makes him different than what we usually see of Gog and I would have loved to have seen more of that but never really got there. Dan Mora again does some really cool and flashy action, filling the whole page with parts of the fight instead of containing it with little panels within the page. Last issue I was quite worried about how he was going to differentiate himself between two characters, specifically the two Supermen since now they both wear the same costume, and Dan pulled it off really well, giving the younger Superman no cape and some messed up hair, and I also like the visual representation of now that the Kingdom Come Superman isn't under Gog's control anymore more he feels more like Superman so both of these characters stand the same way and they attack the same way and I thought that was quite a neat visual representation of him becoming Superman again if you will after being under Gog's control and it was done really well and I like that was probably a script thing from Mark but Dan visualized it very well. Tamara Bond villain's colors again also look so vivid and bright and just bring the pages alive and just so much stuff happens on each of these pages and there's some fantastic splash pages as well near the end of the book featuring some of the classic Kingdom Come heroes that you know and love like the Green Lantern and the Wonder Woman and I like that they were all brought to life in this book with just bright vivid colors. The world's finest managed to turn David on Gog along with the heroes of Earth-22 leading to a big battle against Gog and it's only the Superman combining their powers that's enough to put him down for good. Only however Gog's plan works and not only does a portal to Apocalypse open but also dark side appears so ready for a fight I'm looking forward to seeing how Wade handles dark side here since the original Kingdom Come universe actually had a dark side and it wasn't the dark side we know it was actually Orion taken over from his surrogate father because of course Kingdom Come was all about generational heroes and legacy heroes and of course dark side would become Orion Orion would become dark side I also have to wonder too if this book will honor the stuff that Joshua Williamson set up through Infinite Frontier, Dark Crisis, and all the stuff he's been doing since he took over as sort of the architect of DC canon at the moment. And that is that Darkseid is one being throughout the multiverse. He he understands that there are other versions of him out there, but they're technically the same person. It's a very Grant Morrison idea because again, it's something that came from Grant Morrison and Williamson brought that back and built on it. So I'm intrigued to see if Wade is going to go that route and this is going to be the dark side that the Earth Zero Superman has fought before and he even looks like the classic dark side. He has that classic dark side look to him so I wouldn't put it past him to do that. I'm very intrigued to see what he will do and if he'll build off of what he did originally in Kingdom Come with what he did even though that wasn't really all that much to do with dark side in the original Kingdom Come with Orion and all that it was just kind of like throwaway stuff so he could build on that or he could take what William 
Williamson is doing and kind of run with it and kind of bring it all together in, in the one canon, which I think would be pretty cool. For a penultimate issue in a story arc, World's Finest Issue 23 had all the action and spectacle, but the story felt like it was running in place as the book moved towards that final dark side reveal in the final page. Feeling a little like Wade is ready to move on from the world of Kingdom Come and move on to some newer, greener pastures. I'm looking forward to how he will round out this arc and how he will move on to another arc and what the next arc is and whether David will be sticking around after this arc. I'm going to give this issue a 7.5 out of 10.